everyone. We're back on the topic of cost-benefit analysis again today. And I want to talk about a very, very important concept, and that's a discount rate. You can't have a cost-benefit analysis if you don't have a discount rate, if you don't have discounting. Because we've got future flows of costs and benefits and cash flows and all of that, and that all is required to be discounted. So what is the discount rate, and what do we mean by discount rate? So think of the time value of money. So what is money worth today compared to what it's worth? let's say 10, 20 years from now, would you rather have $1,000 right now? Would you rather have it tomorrow? Would you rather have it two years from now, four years, five years, 10 years? The answer should be you'd rather have it now, simply because you can actually do something with that money. You could put it in a bank, for example, with an interest. You could invest it in some other areas. You could, like for example, could put it into your, if you've got a property fund, for example, might buy a property with that extra money. Or you could buy some gifts. There's all sorts of things you could do with that money that you don't have the option if you don't have it. So therefore, it's worth more having it now. And the discount rate comes in, in a sense, that reduces the value of future cash flows simply because of that value of time. Another element to consider as well is risk. Anything that you receive in the future, there's a risk that you may not get it at all. And that's particularly true when you look at a cost-benefit analysis. If we're going over an evaluation period of 30 years, for example, you're going to have benefits occurring 10, 20, 30 years out. And a lot of things can happen in that time. So many things can happen. And those things could prevent you from getting those benefits quite easily because it's very hard to predict even a year from now. So you're looking at 10, 15 years from now. And that's where the discounting comes again. It's another way of accounting for risk. So how do we calculate the discount rate? Well, normally we would be given a discount rate from whatever authority that you're submitting funding for. So what is this discount rate used for? It would be useful to calculate your present value and how is that done? Let's take, for example, you have a cost. Let's just put that in now. Uh, we've got it in year X here. So let's say that's year 10. So you'd have your discount rate. So you divide that cost by one plus the discount rate to the power of year 10 and that will give you the present value of that cost for that year. And you do the same for benefits as well. Exactly the same, exactly the same numbers. And what you do in the end is you use that to calculate your net present value. So you have a summation of all your benefits and all your costs for every single year, and then, and then you would add them all up and that would get you your net present value. So you've got the argument between do we use real or nominal discount rates? So and what's the difference between the two? So your real discount rate, it doesn't include inflation. So inflation is actually taken out. Whereas your nominal discount rate, that includes inflation. So it's like going to the bank and you receive, uh, let's say, you have an interest rate of, let's say, 5%. So you get 5% on your money. So $100 now, a year from now, you'd have $105. But in reality, you don't end up with $105 in terms of purchasing power because you would lose some of that power because of inflation. So that's what we factor into our, our real discount rate, is that, is that we pull out that inflation. So in fact, you'd only be getting a discount rate, a real discount rate of around 2%. So that probably gets your head scratching. So when you think, okay, we have a financial analysis and we're using a discount rate of maybe 3 4%. We have an economic analysis, a cost-benefit analysis, and we're using a discount rate of 7%. It's higher, shouldn't it be lower? That's because we're dealing with different types of discount rates. So your nominal discount rate is, is generally over a short term period. Whereas your real discount rate, the one that we use for cost benefit analysis, bear in mind that is for a long period. So you'd be taking your long run bond rate, for example, and that would be much higher than the nominal rates that you'd be up to on a much shorter return. So therefore, even though we've taken inflation out of uh, the real discount rate, the real discount rate is still generally going to be higher than your nominal discount rate. All right, that ends us up on discount rates for today. If you uh, enjoyed this video, click the like button. And if you want to see more videos like that, click the subscribe button. And I'll be uploading more videos relating to cost-benefit analysis, also relating to other things in economics as well. Okay, thank you. Enjoy.